or number than you'd expect. The one from last week, all right, 101,000 people responded to the article about the Zika outbreak epicenter in same area genetically modified mosquitoes were released. That, when it was initially released, attracted a lot of attention. The one of Teddy getting a cardiogram when they found out he has a leaky valve, 46,000 people watched my poor dog. He's better, by the way. He's got less teeth, but what, what I love that dog. You know, I love to have brought him back to health and, you know, giving him baby food and talking to him and telling him how beautiful he is. I love my dog. I can't help it. I just, it's a thing, you know, either you love animals or you don't. And if you want to eat them, eat them. But don't tell me that all animals are the same because they're obviously not. We've had the discussion. I know most cows have a, a modicum of intelligence and they don't want to die. I've been in a slaughterhouse. Not a pretty thing to watch. Uh, uh, an elephant is not a cow is not a dog. Let's put it to you that way. There are varieties of of, uh, of of life forms. Because if you want to take that argument to its extreme, you could say that a mosquito shouldn't be swatted. It too is a form of intel has a form of intelligence. You want to carry it further, you could become a Jain in India, who walks around with a a screen in front of, in their hand that they wave to avoid inhaling invisible microbes that they don't want to kill by breathing them. I mean, do you know about that? That's how crazy you can get once you go down that road. And, and on that issue of vegetarianism, I, I resolved it for myself about 15 years ago when I was uh, toying with becoming a vegetarian. I read a great 18th century essayist from England, which, I mean, it was Johnson, Dr. Johnson, who wrote that he was in his gentleman's club in England in the 1800s, I don't know the exact year, and he said he was com considering becoming a vegetarian because it was very popular at the time. It was all the rage. And he said the waiter brought out one of those large silver dishes, chafing dishes or whatever they're called, a serving tray with a cover. And he said he took the cover off and he proceeded to dissect the fish for the diners. And he said when he cut the fish open, lo and behold, what did he see inside the fish's belly but another fish? And so Dr. Johnson wrote, he said, if fish is good enough for fish, then a fish is good enough for me. And that was the end of his flirtation with vegetarianism. And I thought that was very clever. It's along the same lines as Mark Twain, who wrote, I get my exercise by walking to the funerals of my more athletic friends. I mean, I have to get it. I laugh at that one. I have always exercised. My whole life, I've been a physical fitness fanatic in some ways. But I've practiced both intuitively and then more consciously, a modified physical fitness regime my whole life, which was based on, a Chinese philo on the Chinese philosophy of moderation. So I was never a guy who, I was a runner once in my 20s, late 20s, and I remember running up um, a valley, I used to run in the back of a valley in Fairfax, California. I weighed 130, I had a cholesterol of 130. I was running up a mountain almost every day, and one day, as I ran up that mountain, I heard a voice start to scream in my head, stop, 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 stop. Like, I said, what, am I going crazy? I mean, how do you have a voice in your head? Well, it was an internal warning light that went off. I never ran again. I won't even run to the corner. I never ran again as long as I live. I say, well, why not? Because it wasn't suitable for me. I just know it wasn't suitable for me. I bicycle every day. I bicycled the way Mr. Kellogg, actually it was Dr. Kellogg bicycled, I don't bicycle to the point of exhaustion. I don't bicycle to exhaust myself and drive up my, quote, cardio. I do it for a different reason. I do it for a slight uh, balance. I bicycle about a mile in the morning and a mile after the show, maybe two miles, a mile and a half on a flat ground. Why? Because I do it for balance. You've got to understand that equilibrium is as important to your health as almost anything is on earth. Equilibrium, equilibrium, equilibrium. Balance, balance, balance. It's not understood. People think that by driving themselves and hitting themselves hard, they're going to make themselves healthier. You make yourself harder and you look better, but you may not be doing your health a great favor by driving yourself that hard. That's what I'm trying to say. There's got to be some balance in the American psyche, either with the most lazy people on earth or the most zealous with regard uh, to exercise. And that's why I say there's a middle ground. And maybe the same thing is true for politics. Maybe at the end of the day, it's great to be a zealot politically, which I have been my whole life, but have we ever elected a zealot? You want me to go back to this politically for a minute? I'd like to do this. My hero was a candidate who ran way back when in the 50s. He was an Air Force, not a jet, he was not a pilot of a fighter plane, but he was a pilot of, I think, a bomber. Does anyone remember his name, the man from Arizona? 
Anyone know who he was? Come on, guys. I'm giving you a test. Who? Are, who? Barry Thank you, Barry Goldwater. And he, there's a great soundbite that uh, Robert could probably pull up in the next five minutes where uh, he said a certain thing. I love Barry Goldwater for a number of reasons. I was a young guy. I was a, attracted to his message. Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Remember that one? Fabulous, fabulous statement. I like Barry Goldwater. And, of course, he went down in flames. And <clears throat> any time we've had an extreme leftist run on the Democrat side, and we've had them before, like Sanders is the current version of some people we had in the 60s and 70s, they never won. And the only time the Republicans ever had an extreme right-winger like him, and he really wasn't an extreme right-winger, he was just an American-loving conservative, he lost. Because there's one lesson that you've got to know has always played out in America, and that is, is that people generally tr choose a moderate. No matter which party they're in, they're always going to choose a moderate. Listen to this carefully. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. And let me remind you also that moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. He would have been a great president. He would have taken us on a whole, taken us on a whole different course. He was killed uh, politically by dirty tricks played out uh, by the Democrats, as usual. They put out a, car, uh, uh, um, a video of him, you know, showing a flower dying from a nuclear war. They made believe he was going to start a war. That he was a warmonger. But what I'm, I'm trying to say something to you here is to be very, very careful because we get emotionally involved with candidates who may not win in the long run. We have to be very cautious because the ultimate game here is to make sure that Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, God forbid, don't get near the White House. It would be a total and absolute disaster. So you ask yourself, if my theory is that people generally vote in moderates, how did Obama win twice? That's an interesting story. The first time it was done through sheer chicanery and trickery. Nobody knew who he was. The economy had been broken. It had been manipulated. Bush destroyed the economy with his friends in the banking world. And they took as many, much a profit out as they could and busted out the entire edifice. And people said, okay, this guy Obama, he seems like an honest young man. You know, we didn't know who he was. That would explain that. He wasn't seen for what he really is today. You didn't know about his background at the time, the first time. We tried to warn you. We tried to show you the church. We tried to show you the Frank Franklin Marshall Davis. We tried to show you the mother's background. We tried to show you the fake birth certificate that they put out to throw us off from the real story. We understand all of that. But, okay, most people paid no attention to it, and they voted for him the first time. How did he win the second time when he had done such tremendous damage to this nation? That's something that needs to be discussed uh, before long. It needs to be discussed before the 2016 election, and maybe I will do it with you on, a, on another uh, on another show. Right now, I'd like to go to some callers in the last waning moments of the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855-407-282. 855-400-SAVAGE. WSBA Jordan, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yes, Dr. Savage. I would like to know what you think of the Zika virus, because frankly, I'm sick of the media because I feel like they're not telling us the truth. I think the real question you're asking is why is the government media complex hiding the truth about the Zika virus. Isn't that more or less what you're asking? Yes, that, definitely, because my mom's a registered nurse, and they're not even telling them what's going on with it. Yeah, well, there are many articles coming out now. In fact, there's one on michaelsavage.com where a tropical disease expert, an expert more particularly in the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which transmits the Zika virus, is saying that they're covering up the extent and the, 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 extent and the danger of the Zika virus. And there's an obvious reason for it, because the government covers up everything. But the real reason is, why are they covering this up? You'd say common sense would say they don't want it to spread. Well, that's true, they don't. But why would they not want you to think that they need to do anything to stop the spread of the Zika virus? Because the minute they tell you that Zika is going to be a bigger threat than it is, then they have to do common sense things, such as quarantine people who get sick, prevent people from traveling into the Zika-rich uh, areas, and once they do that, then people will start to ask about immigrants and epidemics, something I've been warning my audience about for the last 21 years. This illness did not exist in this country until it was brought in by immigrants primarily from Central America. 
Does that explain to you why Barack Obama and the medical establishment and the liars at the CDC are saying nothing about it? I hope so. And I would remind you to please go to michaelsavage.com if you want to learn more about this and what you can do to fortify your own immune system against the possible effects, uh, you can find my book, Diseases Without Borders. It's an inexpensive ebook that will be out next week. Thank you. I'll be back. I think Hillary Clinton is, is a progressive, yes. Uh, I think that uh, uh, when it comes to uh, her work with children for her whole life, uh, the list goes on and on about uh, her uh, progressive credentials. But who, who sets the standard for progressive? Let me tell you, I, I, some days I'm the darling of the progressives, and the next day, or maybe later in the same day, I am the target of the progressives. <laughs> <laughs> Let me define a progressive. A progressive is someone who pulls the wool over the eyes of morons who think that they really care about them. And the best way to judge a progressive is to see what their bank account was before they became a progressive and what they're worth now that they have been established as a progressive. Because most progressives that I know in politics made fortunes by being progressives. So if that's being a progressive, that's not a bad thing to be. I got to tell you, progressives are doing better than capitalists in Congress right now. The progressives like uh, Pelosi, Feinstein, Boxer, Hillary, their value, uh, their their families' valuations have gone way up while they were progressively moving ahead in Congress, haven't they? So it just shows you progressives, progressivism pays. Progress pays. There's no question about that. This morning, Barbara Bush commented uh, on CBS News about Trump mocks, mocking Jeb. Let's hear 23. Mocked uh, your son turning to you, and he tweeted saying, just watch Jeb's ad where he desperately needed mommy to help him. Jeb, mom can't help you with ISIS, the Chinese, or with Putin. I don't need Putin help. endorsed him, for heaven's sakes. Putin the killer. Putin the... F That's an endorsement you don't want. Okay, so now you know where the establishment Republican Party is coming down. They're exactly on the same side as Hillary Clinton, which is war with Russia. They're being advised again by the Bush clan and the neocons who got us into Iraq. Be very careful about so-called Republicans who hate Putin. And remember who Trump likes. Savage.